Hello and welcome to today's video. In this video, we're going to look at how to use the tools IIIF and the Mirador Viewer for research using images. And I'm going to be demonstrating how to do this with the Special Collections Online platform run by the University of Leicester Library. If you haven't heard of IIIF before, it stands for International Image Interoperability Framework. And it's a technology that allows you to view media files from on online collections in a single user-friendly viewer. It's been developed for people using digital library archive and museum collections. It's particularly good for working with images and also for working with images from different institutions because it allows you to bring them into a single um, online space. Here at the University of Leicester Library, We've recently added IIIF and the associated Mirador Viewer to our Special Collections Online platform, which you can see on the screen here. And I'm going to show you how it can be used with our image collections. So we've got various image collections here, which uh, mainly show historic landscapes, buildings and places. Uh, some are photographic collections of the 20th century, like Vanish Leicester, and then some are 18th and 19th century prints like the Fairclough collection here but we today we're going to look at the views of England and Wales which is over 2,000 images of historic uh, landscapes and buildings most of them are 18th and 19th century prints printed engravings but there are some watercolors um, and drawings as well and they cover all the major counties of England and Wales. To find the AAA functions on any item on Special Collections Online. If you just click on uh, an image like this one here, a general prospect of the Palace of Audley End in the County of Middlesex, um, the IIIF functions will be at the bottom of our metadata. So the item, the image will typically be here just under the title. And if you scroll down through the item description, there will be two IIIF functions or pieces of information you'll need. The one right at the bottom is IIIF image here. And this, if you click on this URL, this is the actual digital image which is hosted online. So if you use any IIIF functions or any IIIF viewers, this is the image that will actually be used. And then you have a second uh, functional thing you need to know about, and this is the IIIF manifest. And if you click the URL here, what you have is a series of instructions and information about the image itself. So descriptions of that image and also instructions about how it should be viewed or displayed um, if it's going to be added to a viewer or reused online. So some of it comes from the metadata we've created, but some of it is further information about the digital image. And we'll be coming back to the manifest later. There's a third function that is available to you on Special Collections Online, and that is a version of the Mirador Viewer. Um, and that is located in the top right hand corner of the screen here uh, after the printing symbol. And it's here and it's an M. This is supposed to be an M uh, for Mirador. And if you click on the M symbol, you will get a new tab that opens and this is the Mirador viewer. So it's an online viewer, an online viewing tool to be able to work with um, digitized images. And it will, when you click on the M, it will, as you've just seen, automatically open up a new tab, open up into this Mirador viewing platform, and it will also load or display the image that we started with. So you can see it on the screen here. OK, so that's some basic information about where the three main IIIF and viewer functions are on any item. But how you'd probably use it in reality is that you'd be searching for a subject, a topic, uh, um, an artist, a place, and then want to pull several different images together. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. And what you'll do is you'll start in the advanced search up here. I'm just going to search the views of England and Wales collection just to make it a bit simpler. So untick all the boxes 
and find it in the list. It's the third one down. Tick the box, so tick the collection you want to use. Then click Save. And then in this box, use your search terms. In this example, I'm going to search for a specific building in a specific place. And that's the Customs House in London, which was uh, a Customs and Excise building attached to the Port of London. It had quite an interesting history in the 17th, 18th, 19th century. It um, was burnt down and rebuilt several times. It was rebuilt four times between 1666 and the 1820s. So there were several different versions of this building at a time when the Port of London was expanding. So it has an interesting history. So I'll just do customs, Custom House London and then click search. So a simple search just to begin with. And I get three items back. This second one is because I've done this before is actually the custom house in Liverpool which I'm not interested in but these two are the custom house in London and I'll click on that one first so a view of the custom house London here's some information about it so let's open it up in Mirador straight away and here it is um, and so let's just have a look at what you can do just with one image. The first thing is you'll notice it loads very quickly. Uh, and then it's got a really nice deep zoom and pan function. So if you're just using the scroll wheel on your mouse, you can really zoom in quite closely into the details of the images. So we can look at the two small figures in the foreground. One, you see one of the guys that is smoking a pipe and another guy is sort of tapping this barrel. But I can also pan around the whole image and in very close detail and zoom out again. So that's really nice and it's better than the options to do that on our platform and on quite a few other library or museum platforms. Uh, another thing you have, if you click on the sidebar menu here, it's brought through all the metadata, all the description of the item that's on our uh, website. So you can see it's got the title, um, the location, a description, the format, our identifier, information about the metadata and the license, the publisher, and so on. So it's brought all that through you straight away. And it tells you from its from Leicester Special Collections there. So that's really nice uh, function. But the second thing you can do is then view multiple images side by side. So if you're interested in comparing and contrasting images, in this case of a building that might have changed over time or a place, different views of the same place, things like that. This is why I found Mirador to be quite a useful tool. So if we go back to our search results here and skip over the one that's about Liverpool and go to this third one. And this is the custom house in London, but from a later date. To add it into the Mirador view, if we scroll right down to the bottom, and if you right click with the mouse and copy the IIIF manifest, so you copy the URL, copy link address, you could also highlight it with the mouse and then copy. Go back to the Mirador viewer and click the blue plus symbol here. Go to add resource and paste the URL, the manifest URL. Remember, these are instructions, information about the object that we want to view. Click add. And you can see that it's now loaded into our kind of selection. And if we, if you click on the one you've just imported, it will now load next to the first one we started with. And you can go through the same process again. So we can do our deep zoom and pan. This one is obviously taken a bit further out with more about the river. You can see some pools in the background there. But we could zoom into the front of the building on both images. And I think you can probably see that although they are similar in style, they're clearly different. So I would say that the staircase and the front door are clearly of a different design 
these um, things across the top are, are there on the second one and not on the left hand side and so on you could go through the whole frontage of the building looking for differences and similarities so one thing this might confirm is these are definitely these may be on the same site but they're definitely different buildings or substantially re-altered buildings so that's just uh, very quickly how you could add in multiple images of the same place the same building different views of the same place um, from different images within one collection and then start doing some comparison and contrast which if you were kind of building up a picture of how somewhere had changed over time this might be a useful way to do it because if you think about it you don't have to download lots of images onto your computer and then kind of reopen them worry about relabeling them trying to identify some other software that you might reuse um, for the purpose of image analysis you can do it You've started online because these images are digitized and published online and you stay online without having to download any extra software. Again, the metadata has been brought through from this, this second image, which is useful. But where IIIF gets really good is we've just stayed at the moment within University of Leicester Special Collections Online. But you could also then go to other institutions' collections and then add relevant images from their collections into this single space. And so now you're breaking through the barriers of that there's relevant information in different collections. And each institution, we all have our own platforms, our own websites. But here, this Mirador viewer allows you to kind of break away from those constraints and you bring everything into one space. And the way to do that is to, first of all, identify other institutions that use IIIF for their digitized collections and then go to their website. I know that uh, Yale Center for British Art in the United States, their digitized collections do use IIIF. And so if I go to their platform, which is here on the screen now, and I do, again, a search for Custom House London. So first, I just want to see do they have any images that we don't have in our Leicester collection about the same building in the 18th century? I click search. And here are some results. I've done this before. So I know these uh, five are the custom house in London. You will see that two of those, <clears throat> the fourth and the fifth one, look very similar to the Leicester one we started with. But these three are clearly different by different artists and possibly at different times. So I'll, I'll click this third one. It's like a colorful image, a change to our black and white ones and just have a look at it. So there's St. Paul's again. So, and the title says London Customs House. So that's definitely relevant. And if I scroll down, you can see like us, Yale have their metadata, their item description below the image, but the um, IIIF functions are displayed slightly differently. In Yale, you can either click on the IIIF logo, that's a IIIF logo there, or you can click on IIIF manifest JSON, which is at the bottom there. I'm gonna click on the logo just to show you, you get this view, view manifest, universal viewer view in Moodle 3. So if I click view manifest, because it's the manifest I need to import things. And if I copy, the URL of the manifest page. Go back to our Mirador viewer, click the plus symbol again, the add resource, add resource again, paste in the manifest URL, click add, and there's our third image. Click on it and now I've got three images loaded together. Now it's a bit hard to view them all like that. So one thing you can do in Mirador is easily, if you just drag and drop the different images, you can move things around and have them display different ways. So I find with three things, this kind of side-by-side -side viewer better. And so here is the Yale one in the center of the screen. You see, we it, it's actually, there are two images associated with this object, this item in Yale. And you see it actually imports two images for me. 
um, a slightly different view of each one. But again, I could go through the same process. So again, if I was interested in changing of the building, I can zoom in to the building frontage. And again, think about how this might be different. I think this is a different frontage from the other two. So it's a, a third kind of alterational version of the building yet again, which is interesting. But this one has a wider view from much further, a sort of bird's eye view from further down the river. So again, you've got a different view or angle on the building that might be of interest to you and so on. You can think about different ways of viewing and ordering them. For example, you could reorder them into date order. So I could have, although that doesn't have a date, I'm pretty sure that's the oldest and from early in the 18th century. And then so you could think about them, how they've changed over time chronologically here. But you could do it differently. You could have it by different artists, um, by different genre, um, and so on. And so that's the basic functions of IIIF and the Mirador Viewer, um, how to find the kind of functions you need on a library platform that uses IIIF, and how to import items, how to import images into the Mirador Viewer, and how to use some of the basic functions of Zoom and Pan how to find the metadata it's imported and how to reorder the display to make it user friendly for you. But I hope that's uh, seemed interesting and user friendly and might prompt uh, people watching this to have a go, particularly if you're going to do this kind of research using landscape images, images of historic buildings and places, um, and that you try it out and even have a bit of fun with it. One last thing, if you've been watching this video, is you might suddenly have started to think as we get to the end, how do I save or come back to my work? So if you've loaded several different images into the viewer and you think actually these are very interesting, I want to keep looking at them, say, tomorrow or next week. How would I save the work and come back to it? Well, in this version of the Mirador view, you can do that if you go to the workspace so these three dots here and you've got export workspace and import workspace as as two options if you go to if you want to save the work go to export workspace you'll open up this new page and if you select all all the text all the code that's uh displayed in the pop-up window. Make sure you selected all of it. Collect, select copy and then paste it into a uh, plain text file would be my recommendation, but you can paste it into a Word file. Um, don't change anything about the coding. Keep it as it is. Obviously, give the document a sensible title. So my Mirador workspace and probably a date would be good or a version. And then when you are ready to come back to the work tomorrow or next week, if you go to import workspace and then you paste the code that you saved or the text you saved into here and then click import, it will reload the workspace. And I'll just show you with one that I did earlier. This is a different set of images. These are all images of King Charles I. Two of them, the two on the left hand side come from University of Leicester Special Collections online, but the third one comes from the Bodleian. And so you can see that it reloads the space and I can come back to my work quite quickly and easily. So that's how to use IIIF functions and the Moodle Viewer on the University of Leicester Special Collections online and on other platforms on Yale and on the Bodleian. I uh, hope that's useful to people. If you do have any questions about how IIIF and Mirador work with our Special Collections Online platform, uh, or you have any ideas for reusing our collections using IIIF, then please do get in touch with us.